Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, streaming APIs. Um, streaming APIs uh, it plays a very important role uh, when it comes to integration. Um, the reason why I say so, uh, if you remember back in the days, right? Uh, just go back you know, a few decades, right? Uh, let's say even before my time. Um, so uh, we used to have uh, the pool technology, right? Where you have a client server, uh, architecture and the client has to pull all the time for the changes from the server uh, which used to work back in the days but it's not really efficient right you have to have a service running behind the scene which constantly you know look for okay tell me if there's an update tell me if there's an update tell me if there's an update right if there's an update um, so it will try to pull the change and update the changes to the, to the system which works fine back in the days, right? Now, Salesforce, in the, if, you're, if you're looking at a Salesforce space, right? Um, if you're gonna use that approach, that's pretty inefficient, uh, in my opinion, because Salesforce has something called Streaming API, uh, which is pretty much based on an event-driven architecture, which, which uh, so which is uh, based on a, a pub, publisher subscriber model. So publisher subscriber model, it's pretty much used uh, since all time, right? I mean, even before the uh, information age, right? You consider an example of your uh, newspaper, right? Back in the days, uh, you know, you used to get newspapers, right? Uh, you subscribe to, say, a news agency, and and they distribute the newspaper to you every morning, right? So you are the uh, the subscriber to the news agency and uh, the news agency uh, are the publisher because they publish the news. The same analogy, if you if you bring it to the Salesforce space, right? Uh, Salesforce have something called the streaming API, which pretty much uh, pushes a change that happened in the Salesforce space to your client and the client, you know, whenever they get it, they do whatever they want to do with that, right? Uh, so instead of client pulling it, Salesforce pushes it, right? So that's in a nutshell. Um, so you can, uh, so w what all things can get pushed, you can send a custom notification, right? And you can uh, send a generic stream. A lot of things you can do, right? Uh, so I wanted to talk about the first generation streaming API and the second generation streaming API. As you can see, I'm just teaching you from the trail head. I don't want to create a slide, right? Just a waste of time. Um, so the streaming uh, API, so back in the days, right? We used to have two, uh, I mean, it still works. I mean, one is the push topic, and another one is the generic streaming uh, event. If you wanted to uh, control your um, uh, the stuff that goes out, uh, the stream that <clears throat> excuse me, the stream that goes out using a circle, right? Then the the push uh, topic events are very handy because your fields that will be part of your stream will be governed by your circle query, right? So. Uh, so that's one of the things, but the, the so that means you know whatever field you specify, only that will be part of it. It has it's a pros and cons as well, right? Um, so you know then you have uh, it also contains a record operation, which pretty much tells you whether it's an update, uh, delete, or create or undelete. Then we have something called the streaming uh, generic streaming event. So if you wanted to uh, push the even message with an arbitrary string value, then yeah, this is good for you. So that's all good, right? Now, you know, why why bother using a so-called query, you know, in your even message in the first place? So Salesforce come up with a uh, second generation. Uh, that is the change data capture and the platform event. They are very efficient. So change data capture, if you're using a change data capture, whatever you could change uh, on the Salesforce space that get pushed, right? Um, you don't have to use a uh, so-called query uh, to specify the field, right? So so what happens is that even message usually contains the header fields uh, with information about the change. So you don't really have to um, use the circle query, so which is very uh, important. An advantage uh, as well. It offers an advantage as well. Um, the platform mirror is, is another, I would say, a new kid in the town uh, because the platform mirror is a, it's like a new version of generic streaming. I've used platform mirror a lot. I mean, I've used change uh, data capture as well. Uh, platform event, right? You can customize your message. You, you know, it just it's pretty easy, right? I'll just show you what exactly you need to do when you wanted to deal with the platform message, uh, platform event. So in Salesforce space, right? Uh, you can create a platform event first of all, 
right? Um, so what do you do? You just go to setup, yeah, and just look for um, uh, platform platform events, and um, then you can uh, create a new platform event, and then once you create it, you can add a field and all kind of stuff, right? Um, so, but before we had an option to choose uh, not the high volumes, but now everything is a high volume. So high volume means like when you are pushing a high volume, so you have a data retention of 72 hours. So that's advantage, right? Um, you can also add the custom fields to the platform event, right? And once you do that, uh, you can uh, use your Apex code or the process builder uh, to push the changes through those field uh, to the platform event. So, so I'll I'll give you a very simple example, right? Uh, let's say um, you wanted to uh, push a change uh, to a separate component, uh, which is like a uh, say for instance, Salesforce is a subscriber. Sorry, sales, Salesforce is a publisher. Okay, so any changes that happens to a contact, right? So your you know contact information, contact you know whatever the data worth. If anything had changed, right? You wanted to send that send out that information um, to a client, right? And a client could be an external system, right? Or could be another Salesforce org or within the Salesforce, right? So let's say for the sake of argument, uh, it's an external system, right? So you do a change uh, to the uh, to the uh, contact, and e even either by using a trigger or by using a process builder, you push the change out, okay? Once you push the change out, uh, you know, the obviously the client um, which implements it, right, should have a support for comma D, right? In, in, you can do that using any technology in C-sharp, it supports it as well, right? Um, so once that implemented, so they receive the change and they do whatever they wanted to do, right? Um, so if for whatever reason, right, if, if, if the client didn't get changed because the system is down, or you know, system went down. So you can uh, use the replay ID. So the replay ID will pretty much, you know, using a replay ID, you can get the information that's been pushed. Okay. So as you can see from the screen, um, so these are the uh, the way the um, the publisher subscriber model works. So you have an event producer which produces an event, and this is an event best which which pretty much uh, contains the events that's been produced by uh, the, the producer or you can say the publisher. And then you have an event consumer, which pretty much you know, subscribe to it. Or you can say subscriber, which subscribe to this, um, to the event. And then once you receive a message, consumer will grab it and do whatever it wants to do, right? Um, if you wanted to enable the change data capture, so it's pretty simple. So, you know, like I showed you for platform event. Um, I talked about the platform event in detail, so I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. When I was teaching Platform Developer 1, I talked about how to implement a uh, platform event. I talked about using triggers, so, you know, check it out. Uh, you'll find it more valuable if you wanted to learn more about platform event. It's more and more getting used, so I would highly encourage you to check it out. Right. Okay. So um, I will do the change. Uh, so you type change, right? It will say change data capture. Um, so you know if you wanted to make contact as a part of it. So you just do all right. So we'll see the contact here. So you just select it and move it here, right? So this. So this is how you activate it, and then do whatever you wanted to do behind the scene. So that's. It's pretty simple, right? So that's um, pretty much I wanted to um, talk about. And one thing I just wanted to mention, right? You can see that replay option. So it's got a replay ID, so minus one. Um, so minus one, if it's, if, if it's minus one, right? That means it's only broadcasting the latest message, right? It will not contain information about the past message. But if you put minus two, that means it contains information about the latest and the past, right? So remember that it might be useful, right, when you're troubleshooting or if you're, or even from a certification point of view, right? So yeah, I, I don't teach just purely from a certification point of view. I teach from an overall uh, perspective so that you, you know, you guys understand uh, how stuff works, right? <clears throat> 
so yeah that's pretty much what i wanted to talk about right it's pretty simple um so yeah it's just a topic which i expect you guys to know right at least if someone asks you right okay so we have this technology in salesforce where you can actually push the change so which one do you prefer right it's based on the requirement i would say um but so out of four i push topic generic um change data and platform and you might have to use either one uh, based on your business needs right so as an architect it's your or as a you know senior developer it becomes your responsibility to understand when to use when right so that plays a very important role cool that's pretty much i wanted to talk about today i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i hope you guys have a great uh tuesday adios